Well, I guess uh, trying to get a handle on uh, how we're using our crown land and our parks, something that my next guest wants to get to the heart of. And a real pleasure to be welcoming the Minister of uh, Environment and Parks, uh, Jason Nixon. Uh, Jason, I guess, first of all, talk a little bit about what prompted you to reach out to Albertans to, to get their input on this issue. Well, we made a platform commitment to do just that. Uh, we would have already started this last spring if it wasn't for the COVID situation. So it's kind of delayed our process. But inside the United Conservative Party platform was a clear commitment to look at both the public lands legislation, the parks land legislation, and make sure that we're uh, we're taking the time to modernize it. Uh, it's decades old in the case of the Parks Act, like 1932, though there have been some changes to it along the way, most of them decades ago. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty clear to us that they don't reflect the multi-use landscape that we manage. Over 60% of the province of Alberta is crown land, both parks and public land. And of course, provides the recreation opportunities that you and I care about and the habitat for the resource that we care about. Uh, but it also provides the economic value to our, to our province that uh, creates millions of jobs uh, inside Alberta. And we have to constantly be looking for ways to balance that. And it was important to us that we provide an opportunity this term to have that conversation with Albertans. And so we're, we're getting that started. So what groups need to be around the table so that you get a, a balanced approach, I guess? Well, we're going to start off with the recreation side of it. So there are other aspects of public lands, of course, that we need to, to have a look at. But we're starting off right now primarily around trail use, uh, the, the starting the work to, to fulfill another platform commitment that the Alberta government has, which was to bring in a trail use fee for off-highway vehicles, uh, to pass a Trails Act through the legislature, recognizing trails not just for off-highway vehicles, but trails for everything, for cross-country skiing, two off-highway vehicles are important to our recreation and, and to our province's history and the need to be able to establish some long-term legislation around that to be able to provide uh, stability uh, in our trail structure inside uh, the province. So there's a lot of groups that will be interested in that. As I said, everybody from cross-country skiers to off-highway vehicle guys and gals and you know equestrian and everywhere uh, in between and so that's where we, we're, we're starting but, but we are going to continue a conversation over the next year of many different aspects of alberta's crown land and that's going to be everybody from recreation groups to industry to environmental organizations uh, and you know we're going to be providing opportunities and one of the great challenges that all of us have at the moment of course is the the COVID situation is making that harder but we're going to look for unique ways to be able to make sure that albertans can have their voices heard so uh, does this include provincial parks? Uh, a lot has been said. Uh, I, I mean, I don't even know where to begin in terms of deciphering the, uh, the theories out there, but does this provide an opportunity for you and those associated with parks to really nail and get the message out that, hey, this is what we're trying to do, not this? Yeah, I think that, there, that there's the opportunity for that. I mean, to be very clear, uh, some of the, the crazy rumors that are out there when it comes to parks, we have to continue to refute, you know, that uh, parks are for sale, not one park is for sale, and no, they're not being delisted to then be sold, and no, they're not being made into coal mines. That's not happening. There's strong laws that would prevent that, rightly so, and we're committed to, to conservation. But with that said, there are now dozens of land class designations across both the public lands and the park system. And it's time for us to have a conversation as a department to make sure uh, that we're doing this in the most uh, user-friendly way uh, and that we're using the right aspects of the department to, to manage different portions of land. But we are committed and we've released a vision, which I hope everybody will take a look at, uh, Crown Land's vision, which is clear about our commitment to recreation and making sure Albertans have access to their backyard at the same time as protecting this beautiful place that we're responsible for, uh, for future generations and for the wildlife that enjoy it now and to be able to make sure that we can sustainably be able to continue resource development, which is critical for our province's future. So this is about trying to make sure that our legislation uh, is able to uh, manage the modern land uses that we see across this province. The Parks Act, for example, was written at a time and, and for basically just campgrounds and was primarily at a time where people would have been driving around to government campgrounds and station wagons. And things have significantly changed on the landscape since then. And so this is an opportunity for us now to look at it, see what works, what needs to be changed, and to make sure that we have both parks and public land protections that we can be proud of, that are useful to Alberta uh, for generations to come. 
Uh, of course, every spring, uh, and I know you're you're well versed with this, uh, Minister. Uh, we we get the the random random camping uh, scenario, uh, especially along that forestry trunk road. Um, is this something that uh, would be high on your list to to address? I mean, Albertans want to be able to go out and enjoy a weekend and 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 get onto that crown land, and and I don't think anyone would argue with that, but. It, we're seeing some extremes. That, that's correct. And no, let me be very clear. I'm committed to making sure Albertans have access to their backyard. Uh, the Alberta government is not going to be stopping random camping. Uh, but what we did hear loud and clear in the last election from people that random camp and people that don't uh, is the need to have a conversation on ways that we can do that better. And one of the biggest issues is money. And so we put in the platform that there would be a trail fee coming for off-highway vehicle use on trails, but there also will be a random camping fee coming now uh, that will it'd be very affordable to be able to allow Albertans still to have access to the most beautiful backyard in the world, but it will go as the platform committed to into a dedicated revenue stream that will help us with both enforcement and maintenance issues on Crown land to be able to make sure we can continue to enjoy that. We have seen uh, an enormous amount of use of uh, what I re affectionately refer to as the West Country and places that I represent as MLA, you know, West Rocky and uh, Sundry and down south in the Crow's Nest Pass. And we need to be able to put the right tools in place uh, to be able to help uh, maintain that. I signed a ministerial order this past August, increasing enforcement in those areas, not to prevent people from accessing it, but to be able to make sure that we stop some of the abuses that we're seeing, like sewage being put into rivers and garbage being left behind. Uh, and really what it comes down to is we just need some more resources for the department to be able to help with that. And then second, we need to be able to make sure we can get some resources to our partners. So, you know, we depend on great organizations all across uh, the province who help us protect these areas and to maintain them. And by bringing in a modest fee uh, that is dedicated to go back to the protection of Crown lands, uh, we should be able to help be able to get those resources to finally address some of these great issues. So the the, the user fees that uh, you may impose with um, off-road highway um, use and the, the random camping, would that go directly then back towards enforcement of the use of the back country. So our commitment in the platform was for it to go back to three issues. One of them is enforcement, and of course that's a big issue. But second was to provide resources to, uh, to clubs. So a great example of that would be some of the off-highway vehicle clubs that are working in the area to build bridges and to create infrastructure. Uh, and not just them. I mean, as I said, there's, there's other organizations like cross-country speed clubs and equestrian groups who are trying to build a sustainable trail network. And then the third was to provide some more resources to, to communities who border uh, the, the large areas of the eastern slopes. Uh, as their MLA, uh, for a couple of those communities, Rocky Mountain House and Sunday are great examples of that. The increased uh, workload that comes on these small towns of 6,000 or 3,000 people of having over 100,000 people camped out of them on a, uh, on a May long weekend, for example, requires uh, you know, extra resources for our fire departments, which are volunteers and our hospitals and those type of issues. So we want to be able to make sure that we're helping with search and rescue. That's another big one. But those will be the three key issues that we will be using those funds for. So they're not to be going into general revenue. That's not the intention. The intention is to invest them back in the resource. We heard loud and clear that's up to the election. That's what Albertans want to see. Uh, of course, they don't want to see it going to general revenue. They're comfortable with paying a modest fee to access what is really one of the, the most beautiful places in the world. Uh, but they want to make sure it actually goes back to the resource. And that's something I'm committed to. Finally, uh, Minister, uh, when does the process get started and when do you hope to have sort of the first results from the input uh, sessions? So the process has started. I launched it with a, uh, with a Crown Land vision document that we're, uh, that we're, that's what we're calling it from the department to kind of give some parameters around the conversation we want to have. We started some uh, online surveys and I hope you put the link up in your post uh, to those because we really want to hear from Albertans. And in the coming weeks, we'll be doing some other uh, sessions. So stay tuned for that to be able to make sure that we can, we can get everybody in to have a conversation about that. And as we move past the recreation and start to have conversations about other aspects of Crown Land, we'll, uh, we'll be doing the same process up until uh, COVID's over. And then hopefully uh, as we get near the end of the process, we'll be able to have uh, some more face-to-face. -face. Thank you so much for your time. We know we're you're busy and uh, we really appreciate you uh, taking some time chatting with us. Well, thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure.